Adrian, welcome to Wealth Talk today. Hi, Chris. Good to have you on. And um, we actually had our end of month Q&A with our members last night and um, you shared what you're going to be sharing with us today. And uh, it was so good to see all of the positive comments and feedback, everyone congratulating you on your journey so far. So today we're going to be walking through the recurring revenue roadmap. So the nine step process that obviously we teach our members to move from a place of insecurity through to security and then on to independence. So are you ready? Yes, yes, let's uh, follow one of the questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's start let's start from the beginning then Adrian. So um can you remember when you joined Wealth Builders? So I uh joined in in May 2009. Um that's 2019, sorry, I should say. Um so I was right at the beginning as a foundation member at the start of the year. You were, you were indeed. And uh, the program has definitely evolved in that time. And um, we didn't have the roadmap when we began, but um, obviously the kind of fundamentals were still there. So now we've got obviously a much more structured process, but let's start with step one in that process. And we know this is stage one, which is all about building confidence at the beginning. And step one is all about mindset, Adrian. Um, So let's start with why. So why was it important for you to build wealth? Um, I, I'd reached the point really where I, I was doing a the day job and, and, and doing well in the day job, but, but I realized I didn't want to still be there sort of 20, 30 years later, um, still in the same position, which is where I would have been if I just carried on as I was. So I realized there was a, there was a need to do something different. Um, I wasn't sure exactly what it was at the time. Um, but I knew I needed to to do something to uh, to sort of get out of the just being stuck going to work, spending a monthly salary each month, and having nothing to show for it in the long term, really. Yeah, and and what was it about wealth builders that attracted you? Um, it was the the no nonsense, no selling sort of approach that wealth builders take. Um, I'd I'd, I'd attend, you know, I'd been in quite heavily involved with a number of property training companies um, in the couple of years before I joined Wealth Builders. And and they all sell everything you go to, they sell you something else sort of thing. Um, and Wealth Builders isn't like that. It's it's advice and, and if you if you need if you need training, if you need something that you you, you are going to have to pay for, they'll point you in the right direction of where to go, which might be from within Wealth Builders or it might be uh, might be from outside. Yeah, great. So, so we got going, we got clear on your why. And the next step then is step two, which is the foundation step, which is really about getting crystal clear on how much asset income you're generating currently, and how much you require in order to reach the next wealth level. So which of the five levels of wealth were you at when you joined Adrian? And, and where are you now? Um, so I was, I was at um, insecurity when I, uh, when I joined. Um, so as I said, I was, I was just earning my money and spending it each month and not really keeping any. Um, but I've now just reached um, financial independence. So it's a, a good milestone to reach. It, it certainly is. It's incredible. And um, maybe we'll touch on later exactly how long that has journey has been. Obviously, it's only been a couple of years since you joined Wealth Builders, but you know, perhaps already had a little bit of momentum uh, building before that point but I mean congratulations that is that is remarkable um, and then the other part of, of step two the foundation is is the debits process uh, you know we we kind of urge all of our members to go through look at their their outgoings and see if there's any savings that can be made can you um can you remember if if you uh, managed to find any uncovering um, hidden money I do recall that when I when I very first did it um with after joining wealth builders i i found about two 200 pounds i think um which was sort of from changing energy bills phone providers and things so a little bit from each each one sort of thing but it's, it did it did add up to a a, a worthwhile amount of, amount of money and i now have a a note on my wealth chart every february to redo it um because uh things things slowly slip and you don't realize that you've uh You've uh, ended up on an expensive tariff with someone, and then uh, you could could change it to to uh, a cheaper one. So it's, uh, yeah. it's definitely a, a good thing to be doing on a on a regular basis. 
Yeah. And, and the key then is when you find those savings, Adrian, is to reinvest them in some wealth building activities. So, so where would that be for you? Um, well, for, for myself, it's always been in property. So it's, it's property investments that I've been uh, putting, putting the money back into that I've, uh, I've been yeah. finding. Okay, great. So moving on to step three, final step of, the, uh, of uh, stage one here, which is the roof. So uh, were you able to review each aspect of the roof, Adrian, and um, just make sure that you had the necessary protection in place? I was, yeah. I was, I was a little bit slow on some of it, really. Um, it took me until uh, March last year to do my uh, will and my power of attorneys. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I was, I was quite sluggish on those. And they're, not, they're not glamorous things to do, and they, they, it was always something that I could uh, find something more exciting to do off until that point but I yeah. did, did get it done eventually <laughs> you did and and, and probably because you kept you kept hearing us keep keep going on about it right and we make sure that everyone's you know got that roof in place and even if it does take a bit of time as as it did with you Adrian at least you've got it now right yeah yeah it's now it's now in place so it's uh, yeah and, it's, uh, it's and does that give a, you a bit relief of... to know it's there yeah well I was going to say does that give you a bit of peace of mind now knowing that you've got that safety yes yeah definitely yeah. good Okay, moving into stage two now. So stage two is all about building knowledge. And we begin with step four, which is assets. So of course, the seven different assets that we refer to as pillars, which you can build your wealth in, Adrian, uh, which did you already have some experience with when you first joined? And have you been able to utilize any other pillars since? So the the property pillar is the one that I'd, I'd already started on when I joined Wealth Builders. Um, and I'd also got um, the pension pillar um, active as well at the time. Um, Mm. And uh, since then, I've also uh, added uh, some uh, some under the investment pillar. I've I've, I've started doing some investments outside of the property pillar. Brilliant, brilliant. Three, Three pillars in play there. Good. Step five is leverage. So leverage is key to building wealth and it isn't necessarily always financial leverage, but there's intellectual leverage, there's relationship leverage, systems, and of course, time. So can you provide us with any examples, Adrian, of how you've brought leverage into play to help you build your wealth? Um, the biggest area I've brought leverage into play is is, is time. Um, it's, it's all, all through this process, up, up until now, I've been working a day job, um, and that obviously means that my sp- spare time isn't isn't that plentiful. Um, but I've I've been working on the property side of things with my dad all the way through this. He, he'd, he'd been into property beforehand, um, and that had allowed him to uh, to get out of doing a doing a full time work um, earlier than that. Um, he is now. Of retirement age, but he still he still enjoys working with property, um, and 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 he's been a a, a great um, joint venture partner, sort of uh, um, doing things along with me when doing a building a a property portfolio. So, that's a, there you go. Well, there's there's another pillar bringing into play there, right? The joint venture with your dad and uh, yeah. relationship leverage. So um, yeah, it, it all comes together. Um, good. Next step is strategy. So we know that your pillars were property and the pension pillar. So what were the main strategies then with each of within each of those pillars? Um, so service accommodation was sort of the the main one I started off with, and it, it probably still is the main main uh, um, focus within within the uh, the property pillar for me. Um, so I'd, I'd started the serviced accommodation um, journey early 2017, um, and and the, the the business really got off the ground in the in the middle of 2017. Really, when we, we took on our first uh, first property um, to, to to run in the serviced accommodation business, which. Um, so 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 that requires management of the service accommodation, right? So. Um, any systems in play there to help you manage those bookings? Um, yes, so it's it's quite a systemized business. So we use a, uh, a program called Tokeet, which is a, 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 a bookings management 
system. Um, so that manages the the bookings coming in, um, manages the calendar, and it provides a, an invoicing system. So that can talk to Booking.com, it can talk to Expedia, it can talk to Airbnb and various other platforms, and then and, and manage the the bookings coming in through those, um, as well as Good. allowing us to take direct bookings. Yeah, and that helped. That I guess that minimizes the amount of time, um, obviously because those systems are working hard for you. And then, what about the management of the properties? How, how have you dealt with that? Um, so the the management is largely um, taken care of by our our housekeeping staff. Um, so uh, con- contract cleaners. Uh, 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 we work with. Two, two cleaning companies, we've got two areas where we've got SA, so two, two separate cleaning companies, one in each area. Um, but they, they're the, really the, uh, the ones that look after the property on a, on a day to day basis in, in between guests. Um, they, they'll, they'll go in, do a, do a full clean, change all the linen, manage cleaning, getting the, the linen washed and so forth. Um, and they report any, any issues that they, that are found. So they've got sort of a, a checklist to go through um, to make sure that the, uh, the place is ready for the next guests arriving. Um, so they just get a message. They, they get told when the, when the guests are arriving, um, when they're leaving, and uh, and they go in and, and, and do the uh, the cleans in between. So it's, it's sometimes it's quite nice when you realise a guest has come and stayed and, and, and paid and you haven't even done anything. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. And and how, how have you fared? Obviously, service accommodation in some areas took a hit during COVID. Um, you know, what's been your tenant type and how have you found the business? Um, we've not been too bad on that, really, because we, we set up the business right from the beginning to aim at um, business travellers and, 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 and um, contractors and so forth. So the, the properties we've chosen aren't in tourist areas. They're not, not really aimed at tourists. Um, so all down the, all through the various lockdowns, we were able to um, to carry on taking bookings. Um, the number of guests dipped. Obviously, there were there were less people travelling for business. Um, uh, people weren't weren't travelling where they they didn't need to, but there was still a, a fair number of people who had to travel for business because they're doing a job that means that they have to be on site somewhere. Um, so we still kept bookings coming in. Um, all the way through the uh, the COVID period, um, at a reduced rate, but we were we were also aimed to, able to claim government grants um, in the same way that all businesses have been able to. So uh, overall, we 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 probably uh, fared quite well out of that and uh, made more uh, more profit than we uh, would have done in a, in a standard year, I think. Yeah, that's good. And obviously now, you know, I guess the bookings are flourishing even more because people are, you know, desperate to get out and start moving around again. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, now there's there's a shortage of accommodation everywhere. So uh, we've got bookings from all sorts of people coming in at the moment. So, it's, yeah, it's, it's, as soon as any anywhere's available, someone, someone will book it for, for one reason or another at the moment. So. Yeah. And now the other interesting thing when we talk about wealth building, Adrian, is obviously ownership of assets, but you can also control assets. So some of those service accommodation properties, um, tell us a bit more about, you know, how, how, you've, how you've gone about acquiring those properties. So they all within that service accommodation business, they're, they're all rent to rent properties. They're not, they're not owned by that business. Um, they're rented in the main from private landlords that, um, with previously been renting out to standard tenants on a buy to let basis. Um, but they've uh, realised that we're a, a good uh, tenant to have in there. We give them much longer um, occupancy than uh, than a, a normal tenant would when they'd be leaving every every few years and the, the, the uh, landlord would have to find another tenant. So, uh, um, so it's not many landlords we've got. Um, there's most of the properties are owned by a small group of, of landlords, um, and that keeps keeps interfaces to a, to a, to a minimum. It, it makes it easier easier to manage everything on from from both sides. But it it's it allows us to to not have to buy the property 
to to start the start renting it out. Um, and because the service accommodation is a a much higher yield business than a, a standard buy to let, um, then we were able to make a profit on that and still pay the the landlord a, a good rent for the property. Um, okay. And obviously so we, we maintain it for them as well. So there's an extra benefit there for the landlord. Brilliant, brilliant. And then um, moving on to the pension pillar then. So what's been your strategy there to uh, to help you build your wealth? Um, so I'd set up a SaaS just before I joined Wealth Builders, so I'd come across the, the concept of SaaS, um, sort of connected with other property training I've done previously. Um, and um, Empowered Pensions was the, the company I selected to, uh, to set up my SaaS. Um, so obviously then through the link with between Empowered and, and, and Wealth Builders is, is, is when I came across Wealth Builders. So my, my SaaS runs sort of quietly in the background. Um, I've lent... Um, money out of the SaaS um, to the limited company that we've now set up to, to, to buy property. Um, so that's the, the SaaS has enabled purchase of a property within that. Um, and then uh, other investments within the uh, in the pension are, are being set up, ready to, uh, to bring more money into that. So, yeah. Brilliant. Good. Good to see the, the pillars working together. So let's move on into stage three then, Adrian. So we've built our confidence, stage one. We've built our knowledge, stage two. Stage three is building assets. So it's obviously taking those strategies. It's turning the wheel of wealth. And um, and that means education, support, connections, due diligence, and then taking guided action. And this is where our wealth coaches are there each month to, to help our members stay laser focused and, and turn the wheel. So what benefits have you gained from your coach uh, since joining, Adrian? Um, well, Br- Bronwyn's my coach, and, and, and she's been a, a great guiding hand, really, through through everything. Um, the one specific thing that sort of sticks out that uh, she uh, she helped me with February this year, I was uh, quite sort of quite a low point. Nothing nothing seemed to be happening as it as it should have been. Um, I was I was trying to refinance a property that 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 um, was just taking forever, um, which is sort of just a, uh, a side effect of, of the lockdown and everything else that's, that's slowing down things at the moment. Uh, it and and that was was getting me down. Just the the monthly uh, call with Bronwyn, um, she, she she sort of picked me up, set me back on track, really, um, and. Uh, yeah, after that, I've I've been able to move on as as I should have been, and, and I think without that that one particular coaching call that month, uh, things could have been completely different. And it's, it's it's that sort of thing that you need. Not necessarily every month. Some months everything's going well, and it's just a, a nice, pleasant chat on the on the coaching call. Um, but other months, you you really need help with something, um, and that help is really just pointing out. What you what you already know, but um, you need you need somebody to do that sometimes. Yeah, I think that's a quite important point you mentioned there. You know, some months you know everything's just ticking along nicely. You know, there's nothing really that that you need specific help with. But the key is still to book in that call because it helps build that relationship. But you know, your coach wants to hear that things are going well. You know, that that's good. It means the plan is working. Um, and there's always going to be hiccups along the way, right? So one month, everything seems brilliant. The next month, it's like all hell breaking loose. So the key is consistency and checking in with your coach every 30 days, uh, just updating them. Um, and, uh, you know, that was really good to hear, obviously, Bronwyn, um, who's got so much experience. You know, she understands the process. Uh, so, yeah, you know, very pleased to hear that. Um, so let's look at step eight, which is all about the results, Adrian. So you uh, you mentioned when you joined, you were at financial insecurity and you've just recently hit financial independence. So tell us what's kind of tipped you over the edge. Um, so the, the one thing that's tipped me over the edge is, is that property that we just, I was struggling to get refinanced. Um, so that on its own has added a, another £500 a month to the, uh, to the wealth thermometer. Um, and that was a, it's a, it's a mixed use commercial property. It's a, a shop and upper. Um, 
and that was bought under auction conditions um, in November last year um, with a with a bridging loan. Um, and the sort of since then there, there was there was refinancing going through through the uh, the solicitors and the, and the mortgage brokers. Um, uh, there was various hiccups al- along the way, um, but that in April that, that all got to, got finalised. Um, so I at that point considered that I could I could then count the uh, the income coming in from from that property, um, separately from the from the shop downstairs and from the flat upstairs. Um, but to, together they, they 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 bring in around five hundred pound extra a month, um, which uh, is, is Tip that that wealth thermometer into yeah. the uh, independence. So how did so, that feel? Getting the red pen out and and uh, you know filling in that thermometer and seeing you hit that that really significant number. How did that make you feel? Yeah, it's a, it's a great feeling to to uh, to to hit that number and 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 and, and to sort of pass another milestone on the on the way. Yeah. So. Yeah. And and that triggered an, another thought in your mind, didn't it, with regards to how you spend your time every day? So tell us a little bit about the decision that you made. Yeah, so off off the back of that, I'm going going back to my uh, my original why as well. Uh, it's the uh, the day job has now become uh, it's it's surplus to requirements, as you could probably say. So uh, I'm, I'm I'm not leaving it immediately, but I've I've set an, a a date to. Uh, to get out of that in in October, so I decided that uh, October is my escape the rat race date, um, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to hand in my notice then and, and leave the day job. Going to sack your boss. <laughs> yes, I'm sack my boss here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Now, what are you going to do with all that free time, Adrian? Are you going to focus on wealth building? Are you going to chill out, or you've you got some other plans? Um. So there, there there's. There's obviously going to be a bit more focus on wealth building. There's there's things I can do with the SA business that I I haven't had time to do um, previously. So there's going to be some some extra effort in, in that. But the uh, the big thing that I want to do that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do more classic car maintenance. It's it's always been a hobby of mine, um, and I've always felt it could be a business, but not really known how to uh, create that into a business that that can generate sufficient income. Um, so I've, I've got the, the freedom now to, uh, to do that, um, as a, a, a sort of part-time business. Um, it doesn't need to generate a full-time income anymore. Um, and I can, I can enjoy helping people out with their, with their classic cars. Yeah. Do more of what you love. That's brilliant. Yeah. So the final step in the process then is accelerate. And this is really all about just turning multiple pillars. So repeating the process of choosing your pillar, choosing your strategy, finding your points of leverage and turning multiple wheels will obviously get you to a place of financial independence. And now for you, Adrian, the target is financial abundance. And for most people, the journey from financial insecurity to financial independence will take on average five years. So Tell us about that journey, Adrian. Obviously, you've been with Wealth Builders for two years, but we were chatting earlier, and uh, and you kind of were thinking back to when you started. Yeah, so my my journey really started in 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 uh, twenty seventeen, um, which is when I started um, looking at the SA um, business. So it was it was January twenty seventeen when I I did the first training on service accommodation, um, and the business was building up in 2017 we took on our first property our first rent to rent um around the middle of uh 2017 i'm not quite sure if it was june or july but it was uh, one or the other um and uh so that's yeah it's taken me give or take a bit five years to to build up to uh um financial independence so uh yeah yeah it's, yeah, that's it's, yeah, almost almost five years, isn't it, to the month? Um, good. And and what do you see now as being key to helping you continue to stay focused and take the necessary steps to uh, you know to to push on from here? Um, well, it's it's still I still need support. Um, I know nobody can do this without without support and guidance. And, and I think the I think the support from wealth builders carries on being completely relevant. 
um, on, ongoing really from 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 now. Um, the 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 guidance of a wealth, wealth coach is still a still an important thing to have, and the uh, the the way that wealth builders breaks things down um, using the wheel of wealth and in into sections. And you see, I've I've been adding um, further strategies and, and and further pillars alongside the essay um, as things have gone along, and it's 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 that guidance of of splitting things up into small chunks that's allowed me to do that and I, 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 I I'll continue to do that in in the same way with uh, with the guidance of wealth builders really brilliant yeah and never let 30 days go by without taking some action to build your wealth and uh you've you've been doing that consistently Adrian and that's got you to where you are today so once again congratulations and uh, thanks for being a great member of Wealth Builders. Always appreciate you sharing. Thank you for asking me on. It's, it's, it's been great to uh, talk about my story.